Hello, my favorite kindergartners. It is Mrs. Shivani again from Citizen Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. When I say that so many times, I start to jumble it up. <laughs> I am ready for another fun lesson in math today. And today we're on double, di double digits. It is lesson number 10, five and five, 10. And we have a fun one for you guys today. Um, we will start off with our fluency games. We'll do a quick application problem. We'll do our concept development, and then we'll talk about what we learned, and we will do our exit ticket on Google Forms. Same as always, same routine as always, but different fun games. And I have some new ones for you today too. Uh, today we're going to be continuing to talk about hidden partners. Remember we talked about hidden partners. It's just a different way to think about numbers. So if I have five, I can say that a hidden partner is three and two, five. If I have the number four, I could say hidden partners are two and two or three and one, right? Four. Um, so hidden partners is just a different way to think about what numbers are hiding inside of other numbers. So we're going to work on finding some more hidden partners today with some teddy bears. And I love this lesson. It's a fun one. If you have anything that you can count with, like teddy counting bears or um, small little erasers or even like if you have like those little Lego figures, those would be really fun to use today. Um, anything that you have to count with and kind of arrange would be awesome. If you have something like that, you can always have a whiteboard to write numbers on and practice um, what I'm doing. Um, but I think that's about it that you would need today. If you don't have those things and you can't gather them, that's totally fine. Just follow along with me. All right. Okay. So we are going to get started and we will start with our warm-up games and then we'll get into our hidden partner lesson for the day. Module one, lesson 10. I can find hidden partners of three, four, and five within circular and scattered dot config configurations. Whew, that's a big word. All right, here we go. I'm not going to play that game. That's a fun one. We are going to practice um, with our five frame flash. But this time, I want you to tell me how many dots you see and how many spaces. This will be like we're finding hidden partners. These will all be in five frames. So it's like we're finding hidden partners of five. So tell me how many dots you see and how many spaces. So right here, I see four dots in one space. Four and one, hidden partners of five. All right, now you do the next one. How many dots do you see? Blurt, three. How many spaces do you see? Blurt, two. So hidden partners of five, three, and two. Next. How many dots do you see? Blurt, one. How many spaces do you see? Flirt. Four. So hidden partners of five. One and four. Good. Let's do another one. How many dots do you see? Flirt. Five. How many spaces do you see? Zero. There aren't any spaces. Five and zero are hidden partners of five. It's true. Okay. How many dots? Two. How many spaces? Flirt. Three, so hidden partners of five, two, and three. All right, ooh, so this is finger counting. We've skipped this game a couple of times, but let's play it today. So I'm gonna click on a box and you tell me how many fingers there are. And try to match it if you can. Ready? One, two, <laughs> three, there we go, four, Five, were we counting up or down? Up, one, two, three, four, five, good. All right, we'll skip that big one. Okay, here we go. Let's do this game together. I'm gonna get my pen here. Draw five dogs playing. Now, I like drawing dogs too, but I am just gonna draw circles to represent my dogs today to, so it doesn't take up so much time. So I'm gonna draw five dogs. Five circles, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now it says, 
draw a fence that keeps exactly three of them inside. Okay, so I'm going to draw a fence that keeps three inside. There we go. Ooh, what do you notice? Do you notice any hidden partners? I do. I notice three dogs are inside the fence. Two dogs are outside the fence. Makes five total dogs, hidden partners. Good one, kiddos. All right. Let's go back to this. Oops. We just want select. Okay, next. Here is our teddy bear counting game, and I think this is so fun. So if you do have anything to arrange, if you got your little Lego guys or anything like that, grab them out and we'll start playing with them. So let's pretend that some bears went to a park. They wanted to play on the merry-go-round. That's fun. That's something that you sit on. You spin, 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 spin. Ooh. Let's put them around the plate and then count the bears. Okay, so let's go. Ready? First, we'll put them around in the plate like they're on the merry-go-round. And then we'll count the bears. Okay, here we go. Okay, count with me. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. When do I have to stop? Whoa, 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 what? I should have stopped earlier? How do I know? Oh, man. So what can I do to show that I know when to stop counting when my things are in a circle? Otherwise, I'll just keep going. It's easier to count when things are in a straight line or in a horizontal line. But what can I do? Oh, do you see this paper clip right here? Can I use that to help me? Maybe, let's see. What if I put this marker, a little paper clip, right here? Let's see if that will help me to know that this is where I start, start counting and in the, then it's also where I stop. Okay, count with me. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> I remembered, I already counted that one, so I don't have to count it again. It helped me. There are five bears. What if I put my marker, my paper clip over here? Will the count still be the same? I think so, but let's check. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, it's the same. All right, let's see what they do next. There are five bears. We already discovered that. Yesterday we found hidden partners inside our big towers. Remember in lesson nine, we found a bunch of different hidden partners. Can we see groups of bears in this bigger group? Hmm, so look at size. Look at the colors. I'll start with colors. I see one red bear and I see two, three, four. I see four yellow bears. So one and four hidden partners of five. This is where all of that sorting and categorizing we did in the beginning of our module really helps us now because we're able to um, think about things by their color and by their shape and by their size. So when we think about color, we can find hidden partners of one and four. What about if we think about size? Can you find any hidden partners if you categorize these by their size? I can. I see three big bears and I see two tiny bears. Three and two hidden partners of five as well. Good work. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. These bears were going so fast on that spinning merry-go-round that they fell off. Oh no. Let's count and see if our friends are okay. How can I count them again? Hmm. Okay. So I had them in a circle and I used that paper clip, but now they're all scattered. So what can I do? I don't know, I don't know. I can, I think I might be able to do something called a counting path. And a counting path will show me, will help me to keep my 
counting organized, so I don't count the same bears. So here's my path. I'm gonna start at this red bear, and I'm gonna follow all the way up here until I end at this yellow bear. That's my counting path. Okay, count with me. One, two, three, four, five. I also call this touch and counting. And this is something that my son, he's two, he doesn't do this very well yet. He will just keep counting bears and he'll keep counting and counting and counting like I did in the first um, slide of this game when I was counting around that circle. He will keep doing this. This is called the one-to-one -one correspondence and it's really, really important. So we touch and count and make a counting path. Is there a different counting path I could go on? Sure, there's lots of different ones. What if I started at this yellow guy down here and I stopped at the red one? Let's count that. So I'll go all the way over here in my counting path and I'll end at red. One, two, three, four, five. Still five. So it's important to organize your counting path. Make sure you start and stop at the same um, item or object and make sure you touch and count each number. I always teach my son that too. Touch and count buddy, touch and count. All right, we did an awesome job finding hidden partners. I'm pretty impressed. Let me share my screen with you again and this time I will show you what your exit ticket for the day is. First, let's talk about what we did. So we did some fun fluency warm up. We found so many hidden partners. We discovered that it's really important to make sure that you know where to stop, start and stop when you're counting and that you could use a marker to help you. And then it's really important to touch and count and make sure you're not skipping something when you're counting and make sure that you are not counting it too many times like I did that first time. Okay, so look at this set right here. Count the following shapes. One, two, three. I see three total shapes. What hidden partners do you see? Hmm, so when we want to know hidden partners, I'm talking about how many have color and how many don't. Do you see one and two or do you see four and one? Hmm. Count the following shapes. What hidden partners do you see? Make a choice. Count the following shapes. I see four total shapes. What hidden partners do you see? Make a choice. All right, kiddos. Great job finding hidden partners today. I'm so proud of you. We'll keep on going with this next time. And um, if you want to play this game more and more with your counting bears or your Legos, go ahead. Send a photo to your teacher. I'm sure they would love to see it. All right, kiddos. I will see you next math lesson. Adios.